Hello everyone, this is Eric Ellen, back with some Unreal Tournament, sort of. You'll notice it looks a little bit different. This is a full conversion called Thievery Unreal Tournament. Let's start with this loadout. So you can join the Thieves team or the Guards team. You can do this multiplayer. That's the main point of it, actually. It's based on Thief the Dark Project, which has been called a first-person sneaker as opposed to shooter. Uh, in any case, when you start the map, you pick your team, you get a certain amount of funds with which to buy supplies, you get some standard supplies that you start with already. Rather than go through all that, I have a custom setup, a loadout setup already, that has a little bit of just about everything. Let me just start with that. You get a list of objectives, which you can look at again by pressing O. Thieves need to do all these to win. Guards need to stop the thieves from doing that before time runs out. Or kill enough thieves that the thieves run out of lives. So if in this map thieves need to steal a pair of gems, get at least 500 worth of loot, and escape. Guards need to stop them from doing that. They also get this optional objective with finding Tommy that I believe gives them extra points at the end of the level. Uh, each team... The players get points depending on their uh, effectiveness, what they did. I have the sound up louder than usual because sound cues can be important at this game. You can hear people's footsteps, you can hear things creaking open and closed like that doorway. It helps you, it gives you an extra dimension of being able to hear where people are, what's going on around you. Because this being a sneaking game, uh, stealth is important. So, being able to hear other players is important both if you're trying to sneak and if you're trying to find people who are sneaking. And then we'll start with the rectory. This is the rectory. That's the church building where the priest lives. The priest, according to the objective, has stolen one of the Eyes of Fire from the crypts and stashed it somewhere in the rectory. So there are a number of safes in the rectory, I think five or so. One of them will have one of the Eyes of Fire in it. Uh, which one is randomly selected when the map starts up? That's one of the interesting things Thievery can do is you can have, um, yeah, randomized loot placement, which adds to the replayability. Because not everyone, yeah, no one's going to know exactly where everything is ahead of time. Water arrows will put out fire. Putting out fire is a good thing, largely because of the visibility sneaking mechanic. You notice at the bottom of the screen, above a compass, there is a thing that gets lighter and darker as I move in and out of the light. That indicates how visible my character is to the guards. So the more light you're in as a thief, the more visible you are. If you have a weapon out, you're more visible. If you're crouching, you're less visible. Uh, things like that. The guards can hear you do various things. So dropping down is not necessarily the best idea. Okay, in this room we have a mirror. In the mirror you can see nothing, because I'm not visible at all. This is what guards would see. If I back up a little bit closer to the light... Uh, there, you can see me start to become a little bit visible. I go further back, they're completely visible. Uh, there's also a leaning mechanic in the game. You can press certain keys. Uh, by default, it's Q and E next to the W for WASD movement. But the leaning will change your viewpoint without changing what your character looks like to other people. So you can kind of look around corners. If you press both at once, you'll lean forward. Which can let you grab things that are just out of reach. I'm going to try to knock this guy out without being noticed. Toss his body over the railing. Obviously the other guards are suspicious because they heard that. It's rather noisy. The AI guards are pretty good, especially when it comes to hearing things. They can be stupid in other ways, but... If they hear you, they're going to react. If they hear something loud, they're going to act. They're going to react strongly. Uh, if they see a body, 
they're going to get suspicious and step up their uh, investigation of the area. They will not notice things like missing loot. A human guard might. Wait for him to go by, and then... Some money in there, and another healing potion. Close the door so he can't see me. Obviously, a human guard, if they notice the door closing, would be suspicious. But AI guards, not that uh, clever. Even if you close the door directly in their face like that. Okay. I think they settled down. So I think I've taken out most of the guards in the rectory, so it should be relatively safe to keep looking around. That goes outside. There's still one downstairs. So I can't be too careless, but... No, there's some loot. A uh, loot target is 500, so I need to steal at least that much before I can win. So obviously, the more I can get easily, the better. Going down here. Okay, that little pant of exertion you heard is a feature the game has. I think they call it mantling. Basically, if there's something that you can't quite go high enough to uh, jump onto, you can kind of grab onto the edge and pull yourself up. So that's what happened there. There's a plate. There's the key to the churchyard. I'm going to need one of those to escape. There's also a churchyard key in the church. See if I can figure out where this guard is and either take him out or go where he isn't. I think I'm far enough into the corner that he won't run into me. There. There we go. And I should have free reign at the rectory now. Nothing there this time. Yeah, minor loot items, as well as objective items like the Eyes of Fire, can also be randomized. Uh, as I understand that there are two different ways to do that when you're building the map. You can either put in more loot than is needed and let the game tell the game you want X amount, but put in like X plus 200. Uh, the game will randomly take out 200 loot when it um, starts running. Uh, the other thing you can do is, like the Eyes of Fire, you can say, here are several places this can appear, it will pick one of them, or however many you specify. In any case, it adds a bit of dynamic, uh, yeah, dynamicness to the game. There's a guard over there. Now, you'll notice you can hear their footsteps, they can also hear my footsteps different types of ground, which as determined by the texture used, will have different amounts of loudness. Hey, there. Oh. Okay, let's put him in the shadows, just in case someone renders out this way. Uh, human guards can rouse knocked out guards. AI guards cannot. Uh, it's also possible to kill guards. Dead guards are just dead. So the way that works is... When a thief joins the level, they have a set number of lives, I think determined by their spawn points. The thief will be placed at one of the spawn points and it takes up one of the lives. If you run out of lives, no more thieves can spawn. Guards, there are a set number of guards placed around the map. When a human guard joins, they'll occupy one of the pre-existing guards. When they run out of guards, no more humans can join. Patrolling there. Murder. <laughs> yep, he saw the body. Luckily for me, I'm nowhere near there at this point, so there's not much you can do about it. Uh, 
I might want to try to take out the other outdoor guard so he can't interrupt me when I'm inside. There's a church key. Use a wider arrow to put out that torch. Okay. Another thing to note is that in most cases, guards can open locked doors without keys. Uh, they can be set up to not do that. Yeah, keys, locked doors can be set up so that guards can't open them. But in general, guards can open locked doors, go right through. That's part of their guarding duty. Yeah, they're rewarded by that. Stuck down here. The torch holy thing itself blocks the light of the torch from the base, so you can hide at the base of it. I think you need to be ducking to be small enough to fit in there, but it's a useful trick. Okay. That light switch will turn on the light there, so if you're a guard, you want it on. If you're a thief, you do not. This switch opens a passage behind me. The coffin key will come in handy. There's that little thing on the floor here that wasn't there before. And we're into the crypts. Uh, human guards will not come down here unless they're chasing you, so I can be a little more... No, wrong key. There. Okay, there's the other eye of fire. Now I just need some more loot. There should be some down here, so I'll try to find that before going back up to the church. Okay. There's one. Just need to get to 500, so we're very close. Okay. There we go. And now I just need to escape. So I'm going to use a speed and catfall potion. Catfall makes you silent, speed makes you faster. I'll fill you full of full Throw a flash bomb in his face so he can't see me. One of them hit me with a tag bolt, which is a special crossbow bolt that lights up what it hits. There, it's worn off. There are also invisibility potions. I don't have any in this loadout, but they will make you temporarily invisible. Uh, healing potions, unsurprisingly, give you healing. Those, are, Your health is the blood drops in the bottom right. If you get hit, those are emptied out. If you use a healing thing, it doesn't take effect immediately. It will show small blood drops to indicate how much you're going to be healed, but it takes a little while to actually fill in. Anyway, once I go around the corner here, that will be game complete. And there we go. Incidentally, that red mesh is what other thieves will see when you're in complete darkness. Unless you're playing on a competitive mode, there is also a competitive thief versus thief mode. But as I mentioned, at the end of the level, you get a score. Uh, for thieves, it's based on things like knockout salutes, how stealthy you were, all that. I think thieves actually lose points for killing guards because you're supposed to be a thief, not an assassin. Uh, the game will automatically go to the next level. I'll just join guards to show what kind of things they get. So, you get standard crossbow bullets, you get flares that light up the area. There's both a sword and the mace. The mace slows you down but does more damage and kind of stuns the thief. Uh, tag bolts light up the area, paralyzed bolts uh, kind of pins a thief down if they hit. Fire bolts just splash fire all over the area. They're kind of expensive, but they're also pretty nasty to go up against if you're a thief. Uh, helmets give them some protection against blackjacking. Guards also get both health and speed potions. Caltrops and mines are traps you can put down. Whistlers will kind of light up and make noise if a thief gets near them. Repair cools can fix broken things. Uh, guards also get a supply chest, which they can use every so often to get back some standard bolts and flares. 
Uh, tripwires and marking patterns are new. I'm not familiar with those because those were not in the older version I used to play. But you can kind of guess what they are from the thing. Uh, interesting things with mines. Uh, they are team sensitive, so if a guard puts down a mine, only thieves that step on it will activate it. However, thieves can use the rock picks to take it up off the ground and then put it back down as a thief mine, which will explode when guards step on it, but not when thieves do. One thing that can be done sneakily in a multiplayer game. If the guards aren't keeping an eye on their mines, a thief can kind of sneak in, pick the lock, put it back down where it was. The guards will think it's safe and a deterrent to thieves when actually the opposite is true. Um, in any case, next time I'm going to be going back to DOS shareware games. Something that kind of reminds me of early Legend of Zelda's If the Boomerang Were Your Main Weapon. Uh, in any case, this has been Hera Felon playing Thievery Unreal Tournament, and I hope to see you next time.